Yes, and of course, crazy people. Hey, before we get started, I just want to make sure that I give a big shout out to all the folks that have recently subscribed to the channel. And I just want to welcome you to the old dog family. As well as those that have been with me since day one, I want you to know you are truly appreciated. And if anyone's concerned because I'm not on my couch today, yes, Gaylord is with me. Okay, so online dating, scams, problems, etc. How do you avoid them or what can you do to possibly eliminate some of those road hazards you might run into online when you're trying to meet a significant other? Or just get to know somebody so that when you come to the Philippines, you may have a connection with someone. Well, I've got my friends Jason and Joy are going to join me in just a minute and they're going to explain to me how they navigated that and I think they put the odds in their favor. Um, and as a bonus, not only have they met, fallen in love and decided to get married, Jason is going to be bringing Joy back to America to live with him and they're going to explain what they did for the K-1 visa process and I think you'll find it interesting how they were managed to streamline the process, speed it along and get rid of some of the brain damage that's involved in that process. I have met my fair share of guys that have run into nothing but roadblocks, problems and overpriced lawyers, etc., trying to get it done and then ended up in failure. So, without further ado, I'm going to bring along my friends Jason and Joy, and they're going to tell you their story of how they met and how they're going to do the K-1 visa. Okay, here comes Jason and Joy. Alrighty, well, as promised, I am here with my friends Jason and Joy, and I just want to welcome you both here to the Little Dog Channel. And I thank you both for coming along. And I really am fascinated with your story about how you guys met. And what I want to hear first, Jason, if you could, just tell us a little about where you're from and your age. Um, I know that you were working in, uh, in art, doing storyboards mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. And you were at one point in time, you were married, the marriage ended, and you were single for about a year, I believe. And then I want to hear from you after you were single, how long you waited, what the process was, and what the experience was like in America trying to date. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I'm 48 years old, so I, I was married 20 years. And when that ended, um, it, it was about a year before I started looking on some American dating sites. And um, it, was, it was very quick that I discovered that it was a lot, a completely different game than what it was when I was in my 20s um, trying to date and um, it just felt like I was going to be in the same exact situation I was uh, after my 20 year marriage but after like six months or a year because it, you, you just immediately like were introduced to laundry lists of things that were required to even prove yourself um, as worthy. <laughs> so that's that's a trip to me. I mean, I've been out of the scene so long yeah. and I, I just haven't had any experience with it. But what I've been hearing is that, you, and you tell me, the women aren't really, they're more or less qualifying you oh, yeah, as yeah. opposed to being interested in you. Can, yeah. you. can you expand on that a little bit? It doesn't feel like there's any love. It's only what can you provide for me, you know? Um, what can you give me that my last partner couldn't? Wow. You know, um, can you get my daughter a horse? Like, can you, I need a bigger backyard for my dog than where I'm currently at to, in order for me to consider you. Like, these are real, <laughs> these, are, <laughs> these are real situations that I was told. You know, I'm like, well, does this mean there's no love? Is it just like what I can provide? You know, and, um, So this involved a bigger backyard and a pony. And, a pony. and these are two yes. separate women. Yes. Oh my goodness. And like, there's no mention of what they can provide, you know, uh -huh. but that doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> because they're a woman. And <laughs> they so... provide, a, being a woman is what they provide. <laughs> so it was like, what can you do for me? Yeah. And that became reminiscent of your married life. Yeah. Because over time you got the honeydew list the honeydew. every morning. Yeah. The romance kind of fades away for whatever reason or not. Yeah. And um, you're no longer friends. 
Um, and like we won't roommate. belabor that, but you're a room, yeah, roommate. And so these women really look like they're trying to just better deal their last guy. Yeah. Is, is that it? Yeah. Okay. It seems like it. And I understand it. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever meet but, any of them in person? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, what was I that like? I dated one for a, a girl in America for three months. Uh-huh. And that was the first person, girl I met right out of, you know, after a year of being separated. Okay. And so I, I was like very still kind of uh, trying to process my divorce, I think. But um, but it was, I would constantly go to sleep at night just going, being worried, just like, is this a good or bad thing? Is it because I, there's all these red flags, but it's different than my last relationship. And so it was just, there wasn't any peace with it, you know. Uh. But there was a lot of pleasant things, but it, then it just came with a big expense, you know, like a, not, not even monetarily, but just like, it, again, it's just going to, just, I just see it ending up how, how it, my last relationship ended up, but very fast. Yeah, and it becomes emotionally draining. It's, it's draining, yeah. Then after that one ended, you know, I, I tried a lot of the dating sites in America. Okay. And so I communicated with a lot, went on a lot of just coffee dates and stuff like that. And okay. It just, it just not, it wasn't, it wasn't enjoyable I, is kind of the main thing. Like it's, it's exciting to think, oh, that maybe there's someone who's interested in me. But um, no one I was really, really attracted to. And it, sometimes when there was someone that it was enjoyable to be with, the, the, there was just too many differences uh -huh. in personality and ideas and perspectives. Sure. And so it, just, I, it was just obvious that that wouldn't work, you know, even though we get along great. Right. And so um, it, that's kind of when I started discovering the, the Philippines. And, Okay, what motivated you to start looking at the Philippines for... Well, I'm going to blame it on YouTube because I was... Everybody else does. What the I, hell? <laughs> I was at a point when I was... I gave up on dating in America. I said, I, okay. I'm just going to enjoy being single because I'd rather be single than be in a relationship that I... That's horrible. That's horrible. And so I said, what am I going to do? What am I going to... What am I going to be passionate about um, as a single man? And I kind of decided I wanted to do some like mission work like philanthropy like go into places that houses had been torn like hur hurricanes came through and helped rebuild and i wanted to go out of the country um to experience other parts of the world and so i for whatever reason i looked into the philippines to for going to rebuild houses so initially it wasn't for dating it, it wasn't for dating no, okay and uh, and i and my, I had some friends who went to the Philippines, you know, back when I was in my 20s. And so for whatever reason, it was on my mind. And so YouTube then started suggesting dating in the Philippines. And, the, and so suddenly, I, I totally blame it on YouTube. But so that, that's kind of what connected those dots. I didn't even consider it. I didn't know about women over here. I didn't know okay. about the culture. I just wanted to find a place to do this. So anyway, my mission then completely changed from... <laughs> me going on a mission to help someone. To, let me find a woman. <laughs> the hell with those four people. They'll be there tomorrow. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, All right, so how did you guys meet? We, I, I did an internet search after that, um, found ChristianFilipina.com, uh -huh. and there was a couple other dating sites I looked at, and they seemed kind of scammy. And so uh, I did my research on Christian Filipina, and after about a week of a trial, I, and communicating with a couple girls because I didn't I didn't know if the girls were really that different I didn't know if I could even communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So I did a trial and After a week trial. I was just like sold. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna get a membership I'm gonna go this direction no matter what like it's super clear to me and um, And one of the, the biggest differences with American dating sites and Philippine dating sites is in America It feels like women come at you with a laundry list of what you can give them and most of the women in the Philippines seem like they come at you with what they can give you. Awesome. It's just a completely different mindset. And it's like, you know, sure, I'm going to give my partner everything. Sure. And, and it's nice to have a partner who wants to give me everything, too. Right. You know? And so it, it was just such a refreshing um, experience. And, I've, and I really felt more masculine than I've ever had, too, because it was like they were more feminine. Right. You know? And so that was really attractive. So, and then I met Joy, of course. And, and Joy, how did you, how did, did you join the same dating site? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I joined the, the Christian Filipino, I think a year ago, a year, then on and off. 
on and off for a year. Joy had throat surgery, so her, yes. her, her voice is very low, so I'll probably repeat a lot of what she says in case the mic doesn't pick it up. Yes. Okay, so what did you feel like when you met this handsome young man right here? Well, in the first time, I was kind of like shy. You were and, shy? And I don't know if um, he's serious or what, but I know he is. And I was happy. You because I've been praying for it. Like, you were praying for it, okay. That I will find someone. And you have? Yes. And you're happy? Yeah, of course. That's what we need to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on some bullet points of this dating site, because I've had a lot of success stories in the past that I've talked to people. Give me uh, 30 seconds of why that site is different than others. Mm, yeah. For me, it was very different from American dating, dating sites. That's the only dating sites I can compare it to. But when I put in my phone number just as a trial membership, I got a phone call like within 15 minutes uh -huh. from a Filipino lady that worked at the company. And we talked for about an hour about what I was looking for, like who I was, like what the advantages of dating Filipino women. It was very hands-on that I just never experienced with the dating site. And, and then I got other calls about helping me update my profile. Well, you should mention this and put some pictures of the snow and, you know, Philippine women have never experienced that. So, okay. you know, just different things to just help make, make my profile more attractive. And, um, and so it was just very helpful. Like, you know, I, I don't feel like I would have needed a lot of help, but it was an additional level of of support that was nice, especially with a whole nother country, a whole nother culture. Sure. And if I needed to check on a girl that, that was suspicious, I could call them and have them look into this girl. And right. I had, had them do that one of the times and, and you know, found out some things that ma confirmed my suspicions and so I just moved on. And it was really, really nice to just have, um, you know, people on your side to kind, kind of, of a buffer zone kind it, of a layer of protection yeah, yeah. to where you're chatting with someone well if you're on just a, a, a regular old site yeah. and you're chatting with someone there's no way to verify anything exactly, other than yeah. taking her word for it yeah and maybe there may be some red flags so you could actually pick up the phone yeah call, call say someone. hey check into member number one two three uh -huh. and just let me know what the yeah. dealio is and yeah. they will yeah. is that correct correct okay. yeah and I mean, you can even just message them and say, hey, I'm having trouble. I don't understand the culture in this way. And someone will call you and say, well, what, what's your problem? You know, what, what, are you, what are you having trouble with? And so there was several conversations like that. Uh -huh. um, and, then, and then, you know, before you get too serious, they, they say, Let's, let us call her and talk to her about you and see if how she feels the same way about you and, and get our opinions of it. Sure. And so, you know, all that was a layer of protection and it just, it, it already was just a bunch of green flags with Joy okay. specifically, but this just confirmed it even more, you know, it just, it just helped me to have peace about it. And that's right. one of the things with Joy, especially, we always talked that, told this to each other, it's like we just have peace with this relationship and we yeah. don't feel like we've had that with other relationships before. Boy, that's what it should be when you're with a significant other. Yeah. There should be harmony and peace, yeah. not friction and aggravation yeah. and one-upmanship and all that other stuff. You really... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, well, we got a I peanut. ruined the interview. <laughs> no, no, no. We just got a peanut gallery behind us here. <laughs> Jeez. You know, children, go play in the yard. <laughs> it's my wife back there making faces at us. Okay. <laughs> Speaking about peace, <laughs> we're, we're having a talk later, young lady. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so um, now let's fast forward to when you actually met in person. We, we were online already. Now you came out here. Give us the rundown on what happened there. Yeah. So about three months after, we started talking on Christian Filipina, and we started having video calls every day, multiple times a day. Um, I came out to the Philippines, and we met and, and spent three weeks together. And, and yeah, the first meeting was, it was, it was really just, we wanted to both confirm if in person it was the same as it was right. over the internet. There is and such a thing as chemistry. There is chemistry. Yeah, wanted, yeah. We both wanted chemistry. We wanted us to actually get along and the, the, just the body language to be there, not like 
<laughs> or whatever it would be. You know, I, I'm I'm tired of negative body language. But uh, it, it was just all po positive and wonderful, right and, and you know, it was exactly what we both wanted it to be. Okay. Uh, and so, so it, it was really quick to to um, move to like, okay, how do we how do we move forward? How do we how do we do a visa? You know. Uh huh. Um, and you so know, I, you, I don't mean to interrupt, but you are you are you've met how many times in person? Because I know you're still living in America. Yeah. This uh, is this is my third. This third is your visit. third time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so. Third time's the charm, and now uh, you've proposed, and you're going to get married. Yeah, I actually proposed on the f end of the first trip. Okay. Yes. So we did it. We did it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And you came back a second time, came back and now the it's the time. third time. Yep. Let's talk about the visa process. Yeah. Now that I've man, That's I have long. heard some horror stories. When I went back home to see my father. I met a dude in Vegas, and he had hired an attorney or something to do this for him. Yeah. And he was in this massive quagmire. And um, I had to bite my tongue because I knew better. But anyway, get into the yeah. visa service that you used, yeah. what they did for you, and how that process is working. Well, um, I... And I just like want to interject. Work. We're not I ignoring you, Joy. But it's just that I know your voice okay. is yeah. very, very low. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't like paperwork. I, you know, I didn't, I don't do legalese at all, and so I, I really wanted someone else to handle it for me instead of me trying to go online and do my own research and figure all the little check boxes to check. And because I know that if it's denied, it's denied forever. And at least that's what I've been told. Like if she gets yeah. her visa denied, it's there's no second chances. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't I know. I haven't tried it, but <laughs> so we'll double I, check that. I said I, I don't want to mess this up, and I don't want to stress out about it. And so I, I hired uh, Christian uh, Filipino Visa, FilipinoVisa.com, and um, just paid for their service to handle all the paperwork and handle you know, doing setting up the interviews and the medical exams and and helping her through the process because I might not be here uh -huh. um, for some of it. And um, so we went through through that service and we were told it would be, what, nine to 13 months before the US government would approve the first stage. Uh -huh. And it actually got approved in seven months. So, so she's approved now and now we're just waiting for the medical and the, uh, and the interview. Yes. And then, so it'll probably be about two months and she'll be able to... So a total out. of about nine months. Total of about yes. nine months. And so for the interview, from what I understand, that's like a pretty stressful moment. Yeah, yeah they, they ask a lot of questions. They ask a lot of questions? About your partner. Now, is there any kind of um, preemptive stuff that this visa company can do for you as far as the questions or anything? Yeah, they actually, they actually do... As far as we understand, they're going to um, walk her through the question process and, mm -hmm. and do kind of a trial awesome. uh, thing, to, just so she knows what to expect. They're going to put her up in a hotel and make sure that they can get her to the questions on time. You know, the company no, is the company is uh, going to put her up in a hotel. In a hotel and, and get make, make sure, sure she gets to the right place. Right place. Mm -hmm. They'll take her to the medicals and exam and uh, just mm -hmm. everything that's really important. They're going to help her with it. Awesome. Her it. And so that's that's a relief for me because I don't sure. want to drop the ball on something around the world that she needs to do that I don't really know how it works. I'm hoping I only have to do a visa one time, so it's not like I'm gonna. I'm good at this. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? right. So that's why I wanted to hire a company that did it multiple times over and Makes over. Makes sense. And that's why I didn't want to hire a company in America to do it because I want someone who specializes in Filipina visas coming out of the Philippines. That was a mistake my friend made when I met with him for breakfast in, yeah. in Vegas when we went back. Yeah. He found the same thing, that he had hired an American guy. And, yeah. Well, we won't get into it. Yeah. So what are your plans once she gets approved and gets over to the States? What's yeah. what's life going to be like there? You're going to go get married? Well, you're going, you got the 90-day fiancé thing going on, so within yeah. 90, days, 90 days, you're we'll, going to be getting married. We'll need to get married. and You're so going to continue to work? I'll continue to work. I still have you know, 15 years before retirement. Okay. Um, I've, I've run my own businesses in the last, for the last 10 years. 
And so right now it's kind of up in the air. We're trying to do so, non-profit type philanthropy work in the Philippines. So yes. we're hoping to start that as a future business um, and focus on that. But if not, you know, there's plenty of other things I can do. Um, I come from Hollywood, so I can I can do art and storytelling, and I can find plenty of work if I if I want to go back into that world. Um, and then the goal is really to move here in, in the Philippines um, once my kids are a little older. Okay. So that's the main reason I'm not coming here right now is because I have kids over there and I well, split custody. Let's touch on that too because that's always a different dynamic that I think other guys may be facing. Actually, to be honest with you, most of the guys that watch my channel are closer to my age than your age. Yeah. But let's touch on it anyway. You have kids. What are their thoughts about joy? And what's Joy's thoughts about your kids? I'm going to assume that you have a 50-50 deal with I your ex-wife. Where, yeah. you know, you this week they're yours, we'll call it, and next week it's hers. Exactly. Okay. And how does the ex-wife feel about it? I mean, you're injecting this new woman into your kid's life. Yeah. So, where do we stand on that? Yeah. I don't, I can't speak for my ex-wife. I'm sure it's not the most exciting situation for her. Um, but I know, I know Joy's happy to have kids around and she loves kids and yes. she she wants the family photo with kids and mm -hmm. you know <laughs> she has all these dreams of being cl a close family so um I, and the, the kids have you know seen joy on video calls for the last year have they yeah that's cool so so they're they're expecting it and you know i think it's always going to be hardest on the kids to introduce a new parental figure uh -huh. and so I'm not expecting it to be um, without any trials uh -huh. but um, I think it would be better than them seeing their dad alone and giving up on relationships I really think you're doing the right thing by your kids mm -hmm. uh, by doing this by pursuing your happiness yeah and showing them showing that them you know like. what I've got a life too yeah and I love you with all my heart Tell your kids, of course you do. Yeah. But you need to be happy. You're entitled. And that sets an example for your children's future. Yeah. Yeah. Because, God forbid, but maybe they're in the same situation as you one day. Yeah. Where they're going through the same trials and tribulations that you went through. And you've set this example for them. Yeah. My children, I was super lucky. They all told me. They go, Dad you need to get a nice woman in your life. <laughs> so I was Hurry living up. by myself, and they were already out of the house. But I yeah. swear, they must have had a meeting one day because all three of them came at me yeah. within 24 hours. And they said, you know what? You, you're living by yourself, and you're yeah. alone, and we're worried about you. You know, yeah. you need some companionship. Yeah. You need to find somebody. And so I think that your children love you, and I, I don't know them, but I assume that once Joy comes in, as long as she doesn't try to come in and take command, uh, yeah. the command, you know, control, yeah. and just lays back and is more of like a sister at the beginning or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that would probably be the best dynamic. Yeah. Or do you agree? Or do you I, have, I agree, you, okay. yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Is that doable? <laughs> and Joy, are you, are you, are you, I know you're, are you excited to go to America? Well, not really. Not really? I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love to stay in the Philippines. You'd but, love to stay in the Philippines. But we both talk about it, about okay. the kids, so... Uh-huh. All we're right. Gonna, we're going to look at, like... I, I, I'm hoping she can look at, a, like, an extended vacation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, we can start a business together, do do things together. Uh -huh. And do... And travel around and show her America. Okay. And then expect to come back here because I, I I don't blame her for not wanting to leave here. You know. I yeah. don't either. I now, don't. Um, this just thought popped into my head. Once Joy gets acclimated and the kids get acclimated, and we get kind of a routine and a rhythm down and all that kind of stuff is going on. Do you think that you guys would be coming back to the Philippines for the three-week vacation? I would like to, I would like to come back here regularly. Okay. Because uh, and that's part of like the the philanthropy stuff. We're going to try to raise money so we can just keep coming back here multiple times a year. Awesome. And um, you know do do our mission work 
and then um, bring the kids along for some of those trips just to get them familiar with the Philippines. Uh, Open their uh, eyes. Ideally, it would be amazing if one of them would want to move here too. You know, you know what? I think the best thing for kids, and your kids are teenagers, right? Mm -hmm. I think some of the best thing that a, a father can do for especially a teenagers is to let them see how the other half lives. Yeah. Uh, we have a culture. I, I'm a spoiled American. Yeah. You're a spoiled American. Yeah. Our kids are spoiled Americans. Mm -hmm. And there are, our idea of poverty is that our PS2 station is, is <laughs> not working. You know, it's not the latest not one. Or, yeah. you know, or, or <laughs> yeah. Whatever. You know, and they don't know what extreme is. Yeah. And I just know that when I first visited Southeast Asia, I walked away with a whole different viewpoint of the world. Exactly. Not just my world, yeah. but the world. I felt like I had been encapsulated in this little bubble, you know, yeah. and that the world centered around America. And when I came out and I saw how other people lived, it was truly a life-changing, spiritual-changing yeah. moment in my life. Yeah. It had a massive impact. And hopefully, I think that has the same effect on many people that come over here. Mm -hmm. I'm always encouraged when I see younger guys like you coming over. You've had enough of having enough. Mm -hmm. You're not interested in buying somebody a pony. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've always said that, that American women are, are, are more feminist and Filipino women are more feminine. Mm -hmm. You know, they embrace the, the, the home life, the family, yeah. the nurturing and they want to build you up and encourage you yeah. and it's not a competition yeah and they That's huge. and and in a solid loving relationship um, each partner is trying to contribute more than they take yeah. and i really see that dynamic between the two of you mm -hmm. i see where you're going to be giving joy more than you ask of mm -hmm. and i can see where joy is going to offer you more than she asks of and I think you're going to have more than 100% mm -hmm. as far as a success yeah. and happiness ratio. Yeah. Life is hard. Yeah. Life is, you're going to encounter bumps. There's going to be trials and tribulations. But we all know that we keep our eye on the ball. And if you guys stay together, um, the force of two is way mightier than just one going yeah. solo. Yeah. So any final words, any final, uh, for the folks watching this, and they wish that they were you. They wish that they had met, you know, this beautiful woman like you had. What would you say to anybody yeah. watching right now? Well, um, try ChristianFilipina.com. I think I think it's a good a good site to just get your toes wet talking to Filipino women. Okay. And definitely check out our our blog, Province Smile. We kind of have been documenting our whole adventures. And um, um, what do you want to say? What do you want to add? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Just say Nothing. thank you. Yeah, thanks for watching. See, for watching. there we are. That's the Christian. That's, a, that's the Christian. That's the Filipina. <laughs> the Christian Filipina yeah. that just wants to be humble and say thank you. Yeah. And so let's, let's go over your channel a little bit. Okay. Province Smile. What are you doing with that? Well, it started out as just kind of a love letter to joy because I came over here uh, and I just brought my GoPro and was like blown away with everything. So I started filming everything and didn't really know what to do with the footage and so I come from Hollywood so I know how to make movies and stuff and I was like you know what I should just to, to kind of relieve her doubts a little bit of, of what I'm doing back in America if I'm serious about this I'm going to just package this up as a love letter to her and show her family and her and my family and everyone that knows me like I'm serious about this girl and um, and so that's kind of how it started and it was surprising a lot of people enjoyed it you know and it grew really fast and so now i think our mission is um now that we've come together and we've met um i i guess we can't talk about dating forever so we're going to i guess to start talking about the next phases whether that's her coming to america and what she feels awesome. about that or the, the mission work we're doing, bringing school supplies to kids up in the mountains. <laughs> well, I definitely, building. definitely, definitely want to drop a link not only to the, the Christian Filipina, but the visa service, mm -hmm. and then probably most important to your channel, so that people that are interested in your story, mm -hmm. they can continue to follow it 
because I can't run around fully with a camera all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a lot of work editing too. <laughs> but I, they can they can pick up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they can sit. They can tune into your channel. Yeah. And they say, hey, I saw you on the old dog channel, and then they can see the process of of you living yeah. in America, yeah. how a Filipina adjusts. Yeah. Um, the philanthropy work that you plan to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lovely story that will last a lifetime. Yeah. So I want to thank both of you for coming on the little channel today. Yeah, you're and welcome. I think we got a lot of good information. I think you guys are doing the right thing. And I just want to, you know, um, congratulate you and offer blessings on your marriage and your life together. I appreciate from it. here to eternity. I appreciate it so much. All right, we'll, right, we'll see you. All right. And for those watching, I'll see you crazy people on the next video. <laughs>